Hi, everybody. Welcome to our steps to from step to spectacular. It's so great to see all of you and thank you so much for showing up. Or if you're seeing this later, watching it. We have some really good tips about intention that distinguish my work. Lots of people do intention out there in manifestation, and there are a lot of different ideas about it. But I try to address very specific techniques, and I try to address issues that are going on in, in people's lives. And as you all know, I really try to supersize the effect in a group. And I've seen extraordinary events with both intention experiments and smaller groups. So I'm gonna show you just two of them, which are amazing stories, plus seven key things that you can do to start transforming your life right now. So let's get started. And there'll be time at the end of this live session for you to ask me questions. You can put them in the Q&A, or if you have them in the chat, our team who are on here too will be reading it out to me. So one of our team members, Molly Lloyd, will be reading out questions. It's easiest for us if you put them in the Q&A section. If you're listening on Facebook or YouTube or one of the other channels, just write them in the chat. And we have team members looking at those as well, and they'll be passing them to Molly who will pass them on to me. So let's get started. I can't wait to share these secrets with you. Hang on one quick second. So my question to all of you, is this you right now? It feels like this for all of us in what we're hearing in the news, what we're watching with our politicians, what we're seeing is happening to the earth, to our societies with polarization and so much more. We're all in a state of post-traumatic stress disorder, started probably from COVID or even earlier than that. So we're all feeling like we need to hide in a corner, but there's great news here. And that good news is that a few intention techniques can change everything in your life. I've seen it thousands of times, and I'm really hopeful to help you today as well. So it starts with the question of what intention is. As I mentioned before, lots of people have an idea of what intention is, and they talk about it essentially as prayer. You're not very specific. You just say basically your, your will will be done, you know, thy will be done. And that is a perfectly legitimate way of doing something and changing something in your life. I'm a very spiritual person myself, but it's not intention. Other people think it's a power thought coming from the brain. You know, I have my power thought in the morning. After my cup of coffee, I have my meditation. I send that power of thought. And that's the only thing the universe is going to hear from me. That power of thought first thing in the morning every day. So essentially, the thinking about intention is I want, I get. And that is the popular version that's certainly been put forward in a lot of the popular literature about manifestation. I want, I get. There's also the idea that intention is hard to do. It requires years of disciplined practice. You've got to climb on your knees. You've got to walk through glass. You've got to walk through fire. You have to do all of those kinds of things. And you also have to prime your brain for hours before you do intention. A lot of people look at people like Buddhist monks and Sufi masters and say, wow, they can do those extraordinary feats because they've worked on them for years. Well, there's another way that I've discovered, and it's all about experiencing the field. And by that, I mean a gateway to oneness, a method, a fast track of reaching oneness. 
we don't experience that much in our lives. You know, we talk about, yeah, we're all one, but we don't actually experience life like that. We experience life in separation. We experience life as lonely people on a lonely planet in a lonely universe. We don't know what it feels like to have oneness. You know, we think we have it in certain situations, but usually we don't know. We don't experience the field, but we do with small group intention or large group intention. I've seen it. I've recorded it. I've studied it. I've surveyed individuals. I've heard testimonials from thousands of people. Their consciousness changes when doing intention in a group. And that's what I help people achieve. And when you have that state of blissful oneness, where you are not separate, where you actually experience the field, that's the secret sauce here. That's where miracles happen. Now, some of the things I wanna tell you about are intention isn't just a, a single power thought because the problem is you are broadcasting 24 seven. You don't realize that, but your thoughts are a constant broadcast. You are constantly sending out intentions, even if you don't know it. In fact, you are what I like to call a leaky bucket. Your thoughts are streaming out of you, whether or not you know it. And you are essentially walking around with a giant megaphone because your thoughts are trespassers that affect other people and things at every moment. So just think about the implications of that for a moment. Think about the other 23 and a half hours of your day besides that power thought. Think about your most secret diagnoses, your doubts and judgments, your fears, your worldview, your unconscious conclusions, your mind's endless chatter. What you think most of the time, what you think most of you, the time is an intention and it becomes your life's intention. So you may have that power of thought at eight in the morning, <clears throat> to heal something in your life, whether it is your health, your relationships, <clears throat> excuse me, your career, your finances, your life purpose. You may have that intention, but the rest of the time you're thinking, oh, look how you muffed that one, or God, you look fat in this, or I hate your hair, or look at her, I hate her hair, Whatever you're thinking, that is an intention and you're broadcasting it 24 seven. We know this from the science, the science that shows you're sending out a tiny current of light all the time. And that is being answered synchronicitously by other people and things, other living things. So you're having a conversation of light. You're also having an intentional conversation all the time, other people are hearing it. If you don't think they hear your thoughts, observe someone when you're just thinking something negative about them and see what happens to their energy. So the first clue I wanna give you, the key to becoming intentional and successful is to become intentional in your thinking. You have about 70,000 thoughts a day. I teach my students how to monitor those thoughts and how to move them from negativity to positivity because on average, about 75 to 80% of those thoughts are negative about yourself or other people. So the first key is to become intentional in your thinking. And part of that is writing down your intentions. In a sense, it makes it real. I mean, we, we know from <clears throat> many studies that 76% of participants who write down their goals actually achieve them. And there's a good reason for this. Writing down encodes information. It increases 
the likelihood that it's stored in your long-term memory. It becomes part of you. We also remember more of what we create ourselves rather than just reading them somewhere else. When you write it down, you're creating it, you're encoding it, you're more likely to live it. The second key I wanna tell you to move from stuck to spectacular is to figure out exactly what you want, but one thing at a time. You can have a whole laundry list of intentions and I encourage my students to do them, but you don't do an intention for everything all at the same time. You also figure out what you want. Now, a lot of people have some very nebulous idea of what they want in their life. I wanna be happy, don't we all? I want to be contented. I want love in my life. I wanna give love in my life. I want to have a lot of money. I wanna be rich. A lot of people say things like that. I wanna be rich. Well, what does that look like to you? For some people, it's being rich in blessings. For other people, it's being rich in their bank balance. But how much exactly do you want? What does heaven, happiness look like to you? Do you have a definition? If you don't, you need to create one. You need to tune into your intuition. What exactly is going to make you happy and fulfilled in your life? If it's health, don't just say, I want to be healthy. What is it you need to heal? if you're suffering from some sort of health challenge? Is it the big toe of your right foot? Well, then that is an intention. You need to figure out first exactly what it is you want, and then you can start asking the universe to give it to you. Most people don't set intentions because they haven't figured out what they want. As I say, they have a nebulous idea. It's kind of shocking how many people get to the very end of life. They're sitting on their deathbed and they didn't achieve anything near what they wanted to in their lives. And that's what I've told many of my students is what I don't want for you. I want you to get to the end of your life and say, yep, I ticked off everything on my bucket list. And you can do that by becoming intentional. And most people don't know how to isolate what they want or how to follow through. So that's one thing I teach students to do is how to figure out exactly what you want. Then you can learn how to set intentions for it. I'm also going to help you. I try to teach people how to dream big. All goal setting has demonstrated, and these are most of the goal setting that are used in business, when goals are slightly challenging, but big dreams, people are more likely to achieve them than mediocre, mundane, basic types of goals. So it's important <clears throat> to dream big. I teach a very specific type of intention focus. It's not meditation. It's more like, as I put it, entering hyperspace. It's a very focused type of intention. And I teach this as being very specifically not like meditation. Meditation causes an increase in alpha and theta brain waves. It also causes an increase in the parietal lobes. They're the parts of the brain that sit toward the back of the head on either side. They are the me in relation to the world. Parietal lobes help us navigate through space. They help determine what is me and what's not me. And they increase parts of the self aspects of the brain. This is me and I've got to keep away from that table because that's not me. Well, meditation increases those parts of the brain. And we all think that meditation creates this oceanic sense of 
connection. But actually, when you look at what's going on in the body, in the brain waves in particular, you see an increase in alpha and theta brain waves. And alpha waves are part of the self aspects of the brain. They are slowed down brain waves, but they're not turned off. There's still a big me in meditation. With my work, we've done brainwave studies on power of eight groups, and we've found the opposite occurs. There's a quieting of all of those brain waves, the parietal lobes, part of the frontal lobes, the part of the brain that is involved in worry, doubt, negativity. That kind of focus that we do, particularly connected with other people in a small group, creates a state of ecstatic oneness, a blurring between me and not me. The brainwave studies we've done have demonstrated that power of eight groups create a connection and a brainwave signature almost identical to University of Pennsylvania studies of Buddhist monks in ecstatic prayer and Sufi masters during chanting. So what we teach is essentially a gateway to ecstatic oneness. And that mystical state, that altered state, in my view, is the secret sauce here. That is, as I say, the, that is the gateway to the miraculous. The fast track to the miraculous, because when you do intention with my system, it's not hours of priming, it's only 10 minutes each time. We've demonstrated this with the 41 intention experiments I've done. Everything from making plants grow faster to purifying water to lowering violence in war-torn areas and healing people of conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder. What we've found of those 41 and 37, by the way, have been have shown measurable positive, mostly significant effects as measured by a team of prestigious scientists working in different universities like Princeton, University of California, University of Arizona, Penn State, and so forth. We've seen it works, and it works after only 10 minutes. So you don't need hours of priming. You just need to learn the right kind of brainwave focus. And that's what we teach, very different from meditation, which is why I tell my participants, don't meditate during this. Don't go through your usual meditation techniques. Our focused brain state is a highly focused, energized brain state of focusing very, very intently on our intention. So I show people how to do it and I help them practice it. The next thing is to visualize your intention with all five senses. Visualization is really important because those who vividly visualize their goals are twice as likely to achieve them, according to studies of people using visualization in various circumstances, including business. In fact, more than three quarters of businesses, 76%, who use visualization techniques Say the business is achieving results as planned. It works. The more you visualize what you want with your five senses, you feel it, you see it, you hear it, you taste it, you touch it, you even experience this in every possible way, particularly the outcome, that is more likely to help you achieve your goal. And part of that is learning the art of mental rehearsal. I show people how to rehearse this in their heads. This is a technique well known by elite athletes. Every elite athlete worth his, worth his salt now uses mental rehearsal. And by that, we mean practicing the whole thing, every last move, every last uh, throw, every last gesture, every last uh, uh, arm movement in their heads. 
When they do that, they're more likely to train the brain to expect what to do so that when you do it in real life, you operate faster and more effectively. So to learn the art of mental rehearsal is not difficult. It's like Rocky Blair right here, uh, shown in this picture. He is part of the Pittsburgh Steelers, or at least was, and he helped them win the Super Bowl one year. And the way he did this was to practice every possible pass, run, etc., in his head. He practiced it over breakfast. He practiced it when sitting on the bench. He practiced it last thing at night. It was all choreographed in his head. And the reason it works is our brain cannot distinguish between the thought of an action and an action itself. Both train the brain to create the neural pathways that are important in carrying out something. So your brain gets to expect it, it knows what to do. If you practice it in your head, it knows what to do when you try it out in real life. So that's one of the techniques that you learn when you work with me. And deep and regular rehearsing of this, we go through different stages. I show you how to do this in exquisite detail. The next thing you need to do is to be specific. Most people don't realize this. This is the thing that most people get wrong. When they do intention, they do intentions, as I said before, like very nebulous ones. I wanna be rich. What does that mean? How much do you want? And do you really wanna be rich in the sense of millions in the bank? Um, and a lot of stuff around you, or is it that you just don't like your job and you want a different one, or you want more time to pursue a hobby, to spend time with your children, your grandchildren, your partner, your friends? What is it you really want? And if it has to do with health or finances, relationships, career, even life purpose. It all needs to be highly specific. And that's one of the things that I help people with. Languaging with intention is very important. Now, most people think <clears throat> that you should leave it up to the universe to decide. You know, if I use specific language, they ask me, won't I limit my possibilities? Well, I've never seen that before. I've always seen that when people are specific, the universe knows that it's that or better, but it gives it a focus. When you don't, I mean, we've seen this with intention experiments. When we just sent love to water, for instance, the intention experiment didn't work. When we sent an intention to raise the alkalinity of the water by a full pH, the experiment worked. We found the more specific we were, the better. And the universe knew to increase our request. So for instance, when we tried to lower violence in St. Louis, Missouri, the most violent place in America, and we focused on a specific place, a specific area, the violence went up every other area of St. Louis except for our area. Now, we had asked the universe to lower violence by 10% or more. It actually lowered violence by 43%. So if you give it a target, it will often exceed it. But you need to be very specific in your intentions. And I show people exactly how to do that, exactly how to word it for any category, whether it is your health, your finances, your career, your relationships, healing a relationship or finding a new one. We've helped lots of people find new partners or even your life's purpose, changing it for something that is really your heart's desire. And by shouting loudly, I mean broadcasting it to your friends, telling everybody you can about it. There's something about announcing it telling people about it 
that makes you follow through. And this is one reason why Power of Eight groups work so well, because as many people do who work with me, they use the groups or even buddies of theirs who are involved doing this work as well to make a vow. I know I had a participant called Patty who <clears throat> had chronic fatigue and she was getting nowhere in healing, but she decided to make a vow to her power of eight group that she would find the cause of this chronic fatigue, which was so bad. She, if she walked her dog for 10, 15 minutes, she'd have to lie down all afternoon. She was just like a battery that was just about out. But by making a vow to find out the reason for this, she got an intuitive sense afterward that she should check her house for mold. And lo and behold, uh, some people who came to check this out found her dressing room was filled with black mold. And this is right where she sat many hours of the day. So as soon as they cleared that out, Patty was back to lift, lifting weights. But the thing and hiking, the thing that really helped her was making a vow, setting a resolution and doing the intentions together with other people. Also working with people and making a vow each time you take a new step toward your goal, having regular meetings with your friends to renew intentions, particularly as I always recommend a power of eight group, which we help you to sort out when you work with me. And the final thing is to get off of yourself. This is the most counterintuitive part of my process that's very different from everybody else's. I have found, and I've done a lot of study on this, that altruism is the ultimate way to achieve your goal. It is a bulletproof vest. People who do things for other people live longer, healthier, happier lives. I've seen thousands of cases of people who were senders in power of eight groups or intention experiments, who have healed their relationships, have achieved good health, even in the most dire circumstances, who have uh, found a calling, who have found a new career, who have sorted out their finances. And it wasn't about them getting the intention. It was about them giving it. When people are stuck, I tell them invariably, get off of yourself. Intend for someone else and see what happens. I did this with numerous people. Lisa, who was trying to write a book and <clears throat> was getting nowhere. She was a bodywork practitioner who had discovered a way to heal trauma through bodywork. And she wanted to tell the world about it. But <clears throat> she was getting nowhere with her book. And she was getting nowhere with editors. She'd gone through a slew of them. So she had done intentions. For the Power of Eight group wasn't getting anywhere. I said to her, Lisa, get off of yourself. Intend for someone else in your group who needs it more. She did. She intended for Diane, who was really in financial straits. And lo and behold, the next week, she gets a, a feeling she should go into a store <clears throat> in her main street of her town. She doesn't need anything in that store, but she goes in anyway. And when she's there, she meets somebody that she had some sort of person who had been introduced to her before. She didn't really remember, but she felt compelled to go over and say hi to that person. They got talking. It turned out this woman was a former publisher, and now she was a book coach. And when she heard about Lisa's project, its stalled project, she offered to walk her through the whole thing. And the upshot of it was Lisa did publish her book, and she was very frightened about marketing, but this woman showed her exactly how to market it. And upshot was it became an Amazon bestseller. I've seen that all, all kinds of times when people were stuck, 
when they sent intention to somebody else, their life healed. But the amazing thing about a power of eight group is it is altruism in action because you're sending intention to other people seven eighths of the time if you've got eight in your group, then it's your turn. So you send and receive, send and receive. I also want to tell you about something else, which is that this works really quickly. Not always. Sometimes people are doing intention for months and it finally manifests. But I see extraordinary miracles all the time. And I want to share two of them with you. So the first one is Esther. Esther had stage mel four melanoma. Doctors gave her just a few months to live. It was disseminated all throughout her body. She and her son, Stefan, had signed up for a retreat of ours a year ago. Then they wrote us to say they weren't sure they could make it because Esther had just got this diagnosis and she was in dire situation. They didn't even think they could make the trip to our retreat, which is held in Yorkshire in a beautiful mansion called Broughton Hall. It's 3,000 years of amazing, um, um, beautiful Yorkshire Dales, plus the 16th century stately home and beautiful cottages and outbuildings. So we hold a retreat there to help heal your past. We use Power of Eight groups and intention techniques for that as well. So we talked to Esther and I said to her son, Stephen, I think it might be good for her to come. She'll have other people there and it might be a really, uh, a really lovely experience for her. I didn't know what was going to happen. So they came and the first night I put people into Power of Eight groups to work with through the week. And Stefan and her mother, his mother got into a group and they decided to do an intention for Esther right away. Um, and this, they decided to go into the 16th century house's beautiful library. So the group decided to do an intention for her. This is what happened, according to Stefan. My mother said that she had a lot of bleedings and I said, go talk with the doctor. And then she said, you have to get it checked out. So basically the week after that, they found out that she had cancer in the uterus, in the whole body, metastasis everywhere. And the doctor said, you have two, three more months to live and that's it. And what made all the difference was that one intention with it for her in the library, in this Broughton Hall, old fashioned library, you know, we had like, it was before we went for dinner, we said, let's, let's do one here. We were sitting in a circle and I was, I was guiding and I was leading and, and these 10 minutes felt like an eternity. And I know my mother, you know, my mother is a natural doctor and she's a therapist and she gave so many people healing but what i witnessed in these 10 minutes that really felt like an eternity was such a deep healing we all felt it but mom said she said i'm healed and uh you know maybe someone else would laugh about it but i, I didn't laugh we all didn't laugh and um i think that was really and she sees it that way as well that was the beginning of her healing because that seed of healing was planted in that very moment. And the belief that she is healed and can be healed, you know, at the end it's always difficult to say what was it, what was the factor. But for her and for me, for all of us, it was very clear that that healing started then. And she didn't say, I'm, I am healing, she said, I am healed. Of course, there were a lot of setbacks in the process, and of course, she did other treatments, all natural treatments. But for me, that very moment changed everything. My mom, they checked her up, the radiologist, they checked her up again. They do not find any trace of cancer anymore. So that happened with one 10 minute intention. And we've been following with Stefan and Esther over this year, and his mom is still going strong.
And here's another case of how Lori went from nearly blind to 2020 vision with the power of intention. And she was part, she was part of my master class, but it was all down to a single intention. Here's her story. Hello, I'm from Fort Collins and I was diagnosed um, with retina damage and I was actually going blind. I was going blind for um, eight years. I was an energy worker along with other things in my life and so I always believed that I would be healed. I just didn't really know how I would be healed. So about five years ago, I became a Reiki practitioner. I was doing Reiki on my eyes every single day, still believing that I would be healed from that. Um, um, it was getting, I lived in a mountain area in Colorado and I had to move because um, I couldn't see to, I shouldn't have been driving, but I was, but I couldn't see to drive. And so I moved into Fort Collins um, and I happened to be walking my dogs one day and I was listening to an interview um, that you had done with Joe Dispenza and I was like, oh my God, I think this is what I need to do. So I immediately signed on for your masterclass. And I think that was back in 2021. I'm not sure. 20, 2021, 2022, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, I just always believed that I would be healed. So I had gone um, to an eye doctor here in Fort Collins just to establish an eye doctor. And I'd seen many doctors before that. I've got, I went to Denver to a retina specialist who said, you really don't need to come back because there's nothing we can do. We could always just check to see how much worse it's getting, but there's really no need. So when I moved to Fort Collins, I established a new um, physician and I'd already been working with the intention group. And I think I went and saw her like on a Monday. The following week, she had set me up to see a retina specialist and um, cataract specialist. And in between that time, our intention group, one of the intentions was to heal my retina damage. So we met and I could feel, I mean, immediately there was a shift. I didn't know exactly what, I still wasn't able to see really well, but I knew something had happened. So the next week I went to the retina specialist Take a moment, take it, take your time. <laughs> and I, I didn't have any damage. Hmm. I was totally eyesight? healed. How's your eyesight now? 2020. From nearly blind to 2020. So that's what a few techniques of intention can do. You need to know how to do it. And it really helps to work with a group. But what I'm trying to say to you is that intention can work miracles. You can go from the most extreme level of stuckness to extraordinary in 10 minutes. I've seen it many, many times. And that's why I teach these courses in different ways. I try to provide different levels at different price points so everybody can do intention. I try to create community sites and I've got a community site now that creates Power of Eight groups, but the important element here is to learn the techniques. So, my Intention Essentials course is basically for people who haven't worked with me before, uh, people who may have worked with other teachers of manifestation, but haven't worked with my techniques. It's for people who haven't done anything before, but want to learn how to do manifestation and intention. And it's also a great refresher course from people that may have read some of my books, or even done something, uh, done a course of mine, but want to practice it all over again. So we've got a course coming up. I only run this once, possibly twice a year. This year, it's only once a year. It's starting on June 15th. We do six sessions. For that, it is five recorded sessions and 
a two hour live and interactive session with me. It's run every Saturday uh, through June, starting June and July, June 15th, and for the next successive five Saturdays. And then we have a live session with me. And I also wanted to let you know that we have an early bird offer still on. It ends on Saturday, but you can save $50 if you join now. So I wanted you to know about that because I'm keen for you to take this course with the best possible, best possible deal. So if you're interested or you want to find out more, just go to lynnmctaggart.com or take the QR code over there. Uh, but at lynnmctaggart.com on the front page, just click on Intention Essentials and you'll find out more. So I hope this is helpful to you, whether or not you take the course of mine, but now I'd really love to answer some of your questions. So if you have questions about the course, I'm going to stop my share and I'd love to hear from you. You know what to do. Write your questions in the Q&A section and Molly will read them out to me. So I see we have some hands up already, Molly, and I assume we have some questions too. Yeah, we do. Um, so I'll kick off with the first one. Do you find that it is better to put people into groups of similar interests or doesn't it matter? For example, people who want to find love in one group, people who need abundance in another group. Great question. It doesn't matter at all. In fact, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you're together with people who are like you, who have the same interests, uh, who have the same voting patterns you know, who are Democrats or Republicans or conservatives or labor, it doesn't matter because what happens in the group is totally transformational. When people work together week after week, week after week, they become closer. They become like super intention buddies, a new intention family, and they help each other. So it's not going to supersize it to have just the same kind of intention together. What matters is showing up in the group. That's what's important. And what I also find, which is really quite extraordinary, is when people do intention together, I've seen this many times in my big intention experiments, even if they're highly polarized. So <clears throat> we've done one, as you probably know, for Arabs and Israelis. And we had them sending love to each other by the end. We had Arabs and Americans do an intention on one of the anniversaries of 9-11. And they were sending love to each other and saying, your God is my God. I've had Republicans and Democrats do intention together and come together. So it doesn't matter. Something about the group intention experience brings people together. So all you need is a group. That's it. And the next question on groups, um, do the power of eight groups have to be eight people specifically? No, they don't. Eight is something I just came across and just thought of on the spot um, when I was kicking around the idea of shrinking down intention experiments. And <clears throat> my husband, who's a very good headline writer, when I said, I don't know, maybe I'll just put people in groups of eight or so, and have them send intention to some person with a health challenge. He said, I love it, the power of eight. So eight was essentially plucked out of the air. Now, maybe it wasn't an accident because eight has a lot of symbolic stuff attached to it. It's a sideways infinity sign. It is very important in sacred geometry. It's a lucky number to the Chinese, but I've seen intention groups work with seven, with six, with nine, with 12. Once it's bigger than 12, I think it's a little unwieldy. And if it's uh, lower than about five, it's not really a group. <clears throat> Great. Um, so on visualization, what if you have aphantasia, so you're, you don't have a mind's eye and not able to visual, visualize things? As you'll learn, what I teach is how to be visual when you're not visual. 
you know, lots of people are auditory. Lots of people are kinesthetic. They feel, they, they have a sense of space. They're not necessarily visual. Sometimes people just think in words. So I help people learn how to be visual when they aren't, when they've got another sense. When we are doing intentions for someone in our Power of Eight group, does the person for whom the intention is being done try to receive what the others are sending or do they rather join in visualizing and sending the intention? They just open up their hearts to receive. The person who is the part is the recipient should not <clears throat> send an intention. He or she should just be opening up his heart to receive. Um, we've got a couple of questions on the length of the intention. So should it be 10 minutes? What if one person, if we're spending longer on one person and that's not happening to at what point do they move on to another person? Well, they should only be 10 minutes, as I mentioned before. That's all we ever do. Um, yeah, you don't shouldn't just concentrate on one person. It's that's one of the dynamics of the group is to move through other people. You can go back to other intentions, but focus on that person. You know, the one time and then move on to somebody else. And once you've gone through the other people, then go back to that person again. So you rotate all the time. One lady says, I found telling my friends and family that it did not help with my intentions. Should I just find more supportive friends or do you have any comments on this? Um, particularly if they don't believe in this. When I talk about telling people, tell people who believe in the process. And that's one of the great things about a power of eight group or people who are taking a course together. They're all in it together. They're supportive of each other. And that tends to aid you rather than you know, having someone who is going to talk down what you're doing. It's hard enough holding beliefs that aren't necessarily you know, shared by everybody in your social circle and harder still if they're knocking it down. So you wanna be with people who are supportive. They are, they've got your back. And that's one of the great things about a power of eight group. Um, how often should people be doing intention at home for one specific health issue? Is it daily, weekly? There is no actual recipe to say you must do it weekly, you must do it daily, et cetera. I mean, both of these people had intentions done once for them, both of the videos I showed you. And many, many times I see this. What I tend to do is say, and I teach more about this in when people are working together, is to intend one time, a few times, and then leave it for a while. Or what we learn in courses, particularly in the intention essentials, is how to break down those intentions, particularly if they are complex health issues or complex financial issues, complex relationship issues. Usually, it's important to break it down. For instance, with a health issue, you may have to do an intention for the right diagnosis. You may have to do then an intention to find the right practitioner. And so far, through the whole step-by-step -step process of getting well. So a lot of these things require breaking things down to baby steps, which is what I show people how to do. Um, can anyone be part of an intention group, a power of eight group, or do you have to have experience with the intention techniques? Well, anyone can do it. You can join my community and put up a little sign. It works like Facebook saying, hey, I'd like to create a power of eight group um, with, you know, with seven other people in my time zone. This is my time zone. Happy for people to do that. That's why we've set up our community. However, what I do find is most people get it wrong. Most people don't do the right thing. That's one reason I'm talking about it today. Uh, and it's one reason I teach courses at all levels because I want to help people get it right. And I even hear people after working with lots of other 
teachers, even some, some who are working with me, not quite get how to phrase intentions for maximum achievability. So part of what I try to teach is to really hone those techniques, because I've certainly seen, and many, many thousands of people have told me, that once they started using these techniques, things started to happen for them, as they did with the Power of Eight group, particularly with the Power of Eight group. Um, another one, could it be that if an intention does not work, that this the person receiving it might have an unconscious self-destructive attitude, so wouldn't be open to receive the healing? That can definitely be the case. I mean, that's one thing that we work with. That's a whole other issue about um, self-sabotage. I teach some of that, how to get over fear and some self-sabotage in our Intention Essentials course. Uh, it's There are many complex reasons for this. And some of them have to do with, say, something in your childhood where somebody constantly told you you were stupid. So you believe them and you don't believe you are deserving of whatever that intention is. There are many techniques to heal that. And I work with them in, in other courses, both in, we do that to some extent in the intention master class, but particularly with our retreats, um, particularly the one at Broughton coming up in September. But uh, what that person can do is to try to look at some of their thinking patterns and share them. And that can help isolate and uncover that. Um, should we be intending for people outside the group who need healing or should we just focus on people within our group of eight? Um, it's, you can intend for other people. The only issue is unless they're in a coma or they're a very small child, you need to get their permission. So I talk to people about this all the time. Seasoned Power of Eight groups will first work with it, with the people in the group and then send intention to people who are outside the group, maybe relatives of the people who are in the group or good friends who are ill with something or have an issue. But they need to give their permission. So as I say, unless they're unconscious or they're very small child or baby, they have the right to have agency here. So ask their permission first. If you aren't sure that they're going to say yes to this, or they're going to think that intention sounds like new age hooey, then you could say, I have a group and we meet and we do a form of secular prayer all the time. Would you mind if we did this for you? Now, it may be something they do like the sound of, Sometimes when somebody says, I'm going to pray for you, that is worrisome. It may, it sounds to that person as though, ah, what I have is life-threatening and I'm probably going to be kicking the bucket soon. So judge it accordingly as to how you ask them, but you must ask them. Um, within the Intention Essentials course, do you also teach how to open your heart to receive intention? Absolutely. That's one of my key essentials is a whole heart opening technique. It's different from um, heart math, which is, you know, very heart centered. It's we have another type of technique that works very quickly within weeks to make people more empathetic and opens their heart to send intention because intention isn't a mind technique. It's a heart technique. You use your mind to formulate intentions, but it's really important to open your heart. Um, is it one person each week in the group that is the, that is the focus of the intention and then the next week is another person's turn? So one intention a week? No. I mean, what I usually suggest for people to do is to meet um, every week and to meet for an hour. And I figure you can do, once you're practiced, you can do at least three people each session. And you should do that. Remember, it's only 10 minutes each person. So think about an hour. You probably want feedback afterward. You probably want to, uh, to talk about how people are doing in the beginning of the session, but you should be able to do at least three in the hour. Uh, 
um, quite a specific question, but is music necessary for the process? No, it's not. Now, I'll tell you why I play it when I do intention experiments. And I play it when I'm in person with people. I play a track called Choco Ray. It's from an album called Reiki Chants by Jonathan Goldman. Here's why I do that. For our very first intention experiment back in 2007, I was set up with Dr. Gary Schwartz, the noted psychologist at the University of Arizona. We were gonna do our first experiment, which was to try to increase the light emissions of a leaf, a very, very, you know, specific intention and a very, very gentle process because we were taking baby steps ourselves. So at the end of it, when we were trying to figure out what to do, I said, uh, just before we started, I said, Gary, how long should we do this? And we both decided then that 10 minutes was probably the maximum we could have people in this kind of thought state, highly charged thought state, who hadn't meditated before, weren't used to doing that. So that's how we came up with 10 minutes. I also thought if we were gonna have them hold it for 10 minutes, and it was there in an auditorium in London, um, <clears throat> people might need something to keep their minds going. So I had my husband talk to the bookstore person at our conference and ask for an album. And Mel said, here, this one, Reiki, it's called Reiki Chants is the is the album and choco ray that first one's really pretty good so we played it and it just sounded great and it sounded like it would it would just be an aid to what we thought was necessary to get into a mystical state um, i've used it ever since as a as a little talisman i guess uh, mainly because my whole technique is called powering up and I discovered afterward that Choco Ray is, as Reiki masters know, is a, a kind of term that means essentially power of eight. So I, I went away thinking there are no accidents. But the bottom line for all of this is music is absolutely not necessary. It works just as well with, with just as well without. And other than Choco Ray that I only do in person, none of my power of eight groups are encouraged to use music. If they want to, they can do so. Um, can someone join the Intention Essentials course without ever reading your books on intention or the Power of Eight book? Absolutely. Intention Experiment and Intention Essentials are a great place to start. So you don't have to have read my books to take Intention Essentials. You don't have to have read my books to participate in an intention experiment. But Attention Essentials has been designed for people who possibly don't know a lot about my work. And I have filled in the basics of the science. I have filled in the basic seven most key essentials, how to deal with fear, self-sabotage to some extent, um, and some of the things that hold you back. We go through that too, and we go through the rudimentaries of a power of eight group. So it's ideal for people who haven't taken anything from me before. And as I say, it's a good refresher course from people who may have read my books or taken something else from me and want to review it all again. That was the next question. Someone says, I'm taking the current masterclass. Um, do you think Intention Essentials would be something you recommend signing up to as well? Um, I think you've probably, if you've done the master class and you feel like you've mastered all the techniques, probably not. If you feel you want a refresher course, yes. Um, if you are feeling like you want more from me, you can, some, we just finished a course called Your Intentional Future and we had a lot of master class alumni who absolutely loved it. So we'll be doing that again probably next year and you may wanna look at that. Or New Science, we're gonna be running that. That is a course just going through all of the new, the science that is an underpinning of my work and all of my books. 
So that's another thing that is available all the time, but we'll be really talking about it in the autumn. Um, we've had a couple of people saying they're based not in necessarily in the UK or the US. Um, does this have an effect on the groups and can they still join your Intention Essentials course? Absolutely, you can absolutely join no matter what. We always have people who are joining my courses from the, the very furthest reaches. So we have people from Australia and New Zealand. We have people from India. We have people from all kinds of parts of Europe. It's absolutely okay to be anywhere. Now with the Power of Eight groups, what we're going to do is help you with certain mechanisms to create your own Power of Eight groups. You have a special community site within my community that's just for the people taking the course. And we guide you about how to create Power of Eight groups yourself. So you will find people, I don't know where, where, what part of the world you live in, but it's likely we'll find other people in your time zone if you wanna join a Power of Eight group. Um, it's quite an interesting question. So should the attendee state clearly in advance what exactly they want to fill with their five senses so that the rest of the group can match their senses? Our group puts an intention statement out and then everyone is making up their own vision. So does everyone need to visualize the same thing as well? That's such a great question. No, they don't. And now in my own Power of Eight group, I've got a couple going, but one that I do, um, one of the things that we do is share what visions we've had for that person. So they're all different. You know, the instruction is really to visualize um, the outcome. And that has many different manifestations from some people. I have one person in our group who is highly visual and, and comes up with extraordinary visualizations. And a lot of them are fantastical, but they're wonderful. And we have others who are much more prosaic. So I think it's fine to have different views and different visions. It's just hold on to the same intention statement. And in terms of the groups after Intention Essentials, um, do they continue to meet up? Um, and how long do you think they should continue to meet up for? Well, we have groups who have been met, meeting since 2013. In my view, they should meet up for as long as you wish them to. And many groups become very coherent and decide to keep meeting. You don't have to meet for a set amount of time. The whole idea is that these people will be your intention family. They will be there, they have your back. I love the story of Mitchell who was meeting with his group. They helped him overcome depression by doing an intention to find the source of this lifelong suicidal depression. And one of the most extraordinary parts of it, aside from him getting an intuitive hit to get his liver filtration systems checked out, and sure enough, one of them wasn't working. That was the key to healing. But a more interesting thing is what happened to him in the group. I mean, that was amazing. But what happened to him in, in the group was serious bonding so that he felt the real reason he healed everything in his life. He lost 15 pounds. He overcame writer's block. He started um, uh, creating a program he had as a clinical psychologist. He had a special program of healing he wanted to create, and he'd been stuck. But what was really interesting was how closely his group connected. So one time he was suffering from uh, insomnia and he talked to his group members and Robert, one of the people he was very close to said, don't worry, I, I felt that I had you covered. And so people started intending for each other. Another guy, Jerry <clears throat> joined my, this was the intention masterclass and he joined it right during lockdown and he became so close to his intention buddies in that group that he said, I now know what love is. I've felt more love this year than I ever have at any other point in my life. This is meeting people via Zoom during lockdown. So he couldn't meet anybody else. 
He couldn't meet these people in person. He loved it so much, he joined another masterclass the next year because he said he wanted more. And it truly, truly, the connection itself is what sustains him. Many people I know have several Power of Eight groups going. They have one they've created somewhere. They have another one they've created from my courses. And these people are lifelines for them. And that's my intention. I know how isolated we are. I know we're all kind of going, yeah, right now. And the antidote, in my view, to all of that is the Power of Eight group. A couple of people asked, what is the difference between the master class versus the Intention Essentials course? Good question. The master class is the Intention Essentials gives you, as it says on the tin, Intention Essentials. These are the essentials to doing intention correctly and doing it well. The And it lasts for those six sessions. We have the, so we have, during that time, you, you undergo, the classes. You watch the classes with everybody else. You've got a community watching at the same time, all on Saturdays. Um, it's Saturday at a particular time. Molly, you'll know better than me. I think it's about uh, 6 p.m. Um, UK time. That's 10 a.m. That's 10 a.m. Um, uh, Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 p.m. Europe. So you, you observe those, you start your community, you've got six sessions and the sixth session is the two hour coaching with me. It's a mentoring session. We work through all of those essentials. So those are the basics that you need to do intention well. The masterclass stretches that out. Aside from those seven key essentials, you learn a batch more. There are 13 keys, and most of those others are about extending intention outward. So you learn how to use intention to pick up the intentions of other people. You learn how to um, overcome and heal relationships with intention. You learn how to deal with negativity, your own and somebody else's. And we actually put you in groups and you learn more about Power of Eight groups by being put into groups. And we work, we, we set them up according to your time zone. The other aspect of the intention masterclass is you work for a whole year. We have you meet with people for a full year and you have sessions with me throughout the year and other advice and guidance that you receive by email. But we have about four to five intention clinics where I work with you to refine things. So it's a level up. We like to call that a stage two. Okay, um, we've had lots of people asking this. So if someone has got more than one issue to be addressed, do they do the intention one at a time for it to be effective or can they do multiple issues and concerns at a time? No, as I said with my little presentation, it's one at a time. Don't try to throw everything in the big soup. You don't need to do that. You can do separate intentions for each thing. But remember, you're trying to focus in. This is a high degree of focus. You learn how to use an extreme degree of focus. and. <clears throat> I, uh, I liken it to learning what Buddhist monks do, which is learning such a high degree of focus that they can, uh, they can take freezing wet sheets and, and boil them dry with their bodies. Now, you won't learn how to do that with me, but you will learn how to use your mind with laser-like focus to focus on what it is you want. So you need to be specific, and that's the whole focus of my work is being specific because I've seen it work so well. So you can do all of those intentions, but do them one at a time. You have your group or yourself intend for one thing. And it doesn't have to come true for you to intend for something else. Sometimes getting off of that one issue you're intending for all the time is healthy. It's like a watch pot not boiling. Get off of it, do an intention for someone else, have other intentions done for you and come back to that. 
So we work, we talk about that, we work with that, with you. Um, does the group always have to be the same people or can one person join for a couple of sessions and then a different person join? No, it's much better with the same people. It Again, the point is to, it will work with another person, but you get different energy in. Somebody doesn't know the same. They don't have the same information about people. They, the whole idea is to create this bonding and that sense of ecstatic oneness. And that happens when people are working together week after week. Uh, my Power Bait group has been meeting since uh, the very beginning of lockdown. So that was about 20, 2020. And we've seen so many powerful outcomes of healings. We're, we focus just on physical healings in the group and uh, with close people within, you know, friends and families of the group. And we have emergency meetings, et cetera, we need it. And we find that sense of closeness is really, really important. Um, I think you've kind of answered this in a roundabout way, but is it important for a group to be in the same time zone? I mean, they can be in different countries, but should they be in the same, same time zone? No, that's not essential as long as they're happy to meet. I mean, we put people in the same time zone so it maximizes their abilities to meet. But, you know, if, if I'm in my group, mostly live in California. I live in the UK. <clears throat> we have an eight hour time difference. Nevertheless, we find time to meet every single week. And it's late in the afternoon for me and it's early in the morning for them. So as long as you're happy to meet at the times you can meet or meet together, then it doesn't matter. You can be on opposite sides of the planet. Um, we've also had a couple of people asking if you find any value and can you do intentions on your own? as well as part of a group? Yes, you can. And I have many students who take courses of mine and learn how to be intentional in their life. I love numerous of them who have said the statements of numerous of them who have said, I use <clears throat> intention now for everything and not just parking spaces, I might add. But they become intentional in the way they live their lives. They're focused, they, they have intentions, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you know, lifelong intentions. And they become the drivers of their own car, as they say. So I encourage both, I encourage both. <clears throat> I think that, yeah, I, I think some of the questions you've already answered. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Are there any other questions in the chat that we need to address? Someone's just asked, I think you've answered this, if, um, is it better to have, is it more powerful when you have eight consistently meeting or if you have sort of eight one week and five the next? Will that happen? If it's the same people and it's just five, it still can work. It doesn't have to be eight every single time. Not everybody can meet every single time. If it's the same group, what I discourage is people coming in and out um, who aren't part of your group. So establish a group, have them meet, have as many come together as can each time, and, um, and just make sure that you meet consistently. So it's every Monday at eight o'clock, or it's every Thursday at 8 a.m., or it's every weekend, you know, every Saturday or Sunday at 10 a.m., or whatever is convenient for the whole group. As many people come as can each time, and some people will come and go, but it's the, it, they're all part of the same group, you know, and they all are encouraged to meet as much as they can. And I'm sure they will show up as much as they can if they're dedicated to a power of eight experience. Someone's asked, is there, do you find there's any difference in meeting in person or online over Zoom? Well, 
almost all my courses have, other than my retreats and other than when I speak in person or have a workshop, I'm teaching online. And I have seen thousands of healings of every variety, whether it has been physical health, financial health, some amazing windfalls, whether it's been career changes and amazing upgrades of careers or new careers and exciting careers, whether it's been healing old relationships or finding new ones or finding a third act, a more brilliant and fulfilling life purpose. I've seen that all. And these are people who have never met in person. Having said that, when we do meet, in during the retreat, you know, meeting in person is fabulous. You get to touch and feel people. You get to see them in person. You know, it's wonderful to do that too. But in terms of outcome, there is no difference I have found. Um, can you hold your own intention while intending for another? No. Open your heart. Remember, number seven key, get off of yourself. Don't just throw your own intention in. There will be time for you. You'll have your turn. But if you're doing an intention for someone else, all of your focus, all of your heart-centeredness, everything about it should be directed at that person. Your visualizations, et cetera, should be for them, not you. You'll have your turn. Another question coming from YouTube as well. What do you... What are your thoughts about intention for attracting a des your destined soulmate? Oh, I have loads of stories about that, but I'll tell you about uh, one that I loved, which is Joy. Joy was in a class of mine, and she was in a Power of Eight group, and she wanted to open up her heart to love, she told her group. She really wanted a relationship in her life. She had moved to Australia. And she had been alone for a number of years. So they do an intention for her. This is during COVID lockdown. Out of nowhere, she gets a, a call from a boyfriend of hers from 35 years ago. I kid you not. They start calling. They start corresponding. They start really connecting. And he decides to take the plunge, come to Australia, go through quarantine. So he's got to hang out in a hotel for two weeks. And finally, he meets her again and they move in together and they're happily together. So that's my favorite story. But I've seen so many other situations of people finding their soulmate and manifesting them through the techniques that I teach. I've seen people who suddenly had dates with Mr. Wright or Ms. Wright. I've had people have people come into their lives. Also, I've had loads of people improve their, their existing relationships with the power of intention. And I think obviously you've said it's 10 minutes, but can the intention setting be any less than 10 minutes? Ideally, it's 10 minutes. It can be. But that's what we found works. Uh, sometimes if there isn't enough time, it's okay, maybe about five minutes, but it's important to hold it. And the reason being is you connect more. Unless you're really skilled at it, it takes you to a very deep place when you go for 10 minutes. Um, and I know you've said they should meet at the same time each week, but if they happen to have to shift their meeting time is it still as effective oh yeah they don't have to meet at the same time each week they just have to meet as every week if they can i mean the the more they can meet so if it's at least once a week that's really important but the meeting time doesn't have to stay the same I mean, with my own Power of Eight group, I couldn't meet on Monday. So we held it Tuesday. We had a, an important intention that we needed to do that day. And what about confidentiality between the groups? Is there sort of rules around, around that? Well, yeah, I would say. I mean, the point is to share very deeply and from the heart. 
you know, you're going to be sharing details about yourself with this group, with an open heart. And so I think it should go without saying that you keep things confidential. Um, I can't imagine unless somebody is really joining for spurious reasons that people wouldn't. Uh, I don't think you have to sign NDAs, um, non-disclosure agreements, but I think it should be, you could discuss it in the beginning that what is in this Zoom room stays in this Zoom room, or if you're meeting in person, um, what happens in this group, in this room, stays in this room. And by the way, many of my Power of Eight groups have made the journeys to meet each other or had reunions if they if they came to a retreat of mine. One did that last year, they met in um, Europe, another one met in the UK, um, and they were a lot of them from America as well. Um, we had another group in America who traveled, some of the members traveled about 500 miles to meet each other in person. Others in California, you know, traveled a bit to come from Northern California to Southern California to connect. So people do meet up in person, but as I say, it doesn't really, it's great for friendship. It's not necessary for intention. Um, someone's asked, what if your mind wanders at instances during the 10 minutes of intention? Well, that's one of the things that I teach is how to focus your mind. And there are a lot of practice elements that you can go through to improve your ability to focus. Do you have a plan for a global intention session? I do indeed have a plan. I am working with Gaia and Gaia TV to create a giant global intention. And we'll be announcing it in the early autumn. Uh, as you probably know, we held three for Israel, Gaza. Um, I may, do one this summer, but we're busy organizing this big global event in the end of October. So stay tuned and I'll be announcing it soon. And a couple of people asked if they're not available for one of the sessions and it's recorded, but do they get, will that have an effect on how they're learning and doing the intention? No, just need to watch the recording. They are all recorded. And all I would say is it's really helpful to come to the mentoring session, to try in every way to come to it, but even that will be recorded too. I've had lots of people now asking about how the groups work with Intention Essentials. How do they go about setting them up? We will give all kinds of instructions about it. We set up a private community and invite everybody to come. And then we give them instructions about how to set up with each other. And they don't have to be exactly eight, as I said before. It can be seven, it can be nine, it can be 12. But we will help with that if they need any help. Our intention group is alternating Thursdays and Sundays, so sometimes we have four in between, sometimes we have 10. Is that okay, or do you settle on one meeting per week? Well, it really depends on the group. If it's working and you're happy to meet twice a week, fine. If you're finding that people are dribbling off because they just can't devote that much time to it, then I would recommend that you just do it once a week but it really depends on you and your group. I think- Okay. I'm just getting repeats now, but that's all good. Okay, well, great. I'm really glad I got a chance to answer so many questions. I hope that helps you more. I hope you have learned something with this session about uh, refining your own intention practices. I hope you're encouraged to join one of my courses. As I said, my Intention Essentials is coming up June 15th, it starts. And if you join now, we still have the early bird on until Saturday, you'll save $50. So it's $249 as you probably saw, and that's dollars, not pounds. And just find out more going on my website. 
But in any case, it's delightful to be here with you. Don't forget to join the intention challenge too. I've given everybody a challenge and you can check it out with my Friday e-news and some of my social media to send intention to somebody you're not getting along with and see what happens. It's been great being here with you. Take care and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye now.